Let's look at this polling that we brought you a little earlier by Red Bridge Group. It shows that nuclear is growing in popularity. There are caveats, of course. The closer you live to these proposed sites, the more unpopular it is. But it is more popular with a growing number of Australians. They are in an older cohort as well. And there is a big gender divide here. But essentially, Red Bridge Group director Simon Welsh puts it down to the narrative the, the opposition, he says, is running the narrative and the, the story of, um, of renewables is not quite cutting through with voters as it used to. There's really nothing coming from government that the people are seeing to sort of act as an alternative or, or a counterpoint to this. So people are sort of saying, well, if not that, then what? And, and I think this is the really deep problem for, for the Albanese government is it's the opposition that's really got control of the policy narrative at the moment. And, and this is really weird. This is this is rare. Usually, you know, it's sort of this point of the election cycle, we're doing focus groups. We're having to remind people who the opposition leader is, um, let alone what their policies are. Um, so I think there's a really sort of deep problem here for the Albanese government. They've sort of lost control of the, of the policy agenda. Joining me live now is National Senator Bridget McKenzie. Bridget, you would have just seen some of that polling this morning. It is kind of mixed news, uh, but do you take much heart in that? Do you think the, the nuclear proposal can get you over the line at the next election? Well, great to be with you, Laura. I've been a strong proponent of adding nuclear power generation uh, to our energy mix for a long time, so I'm very stoked with the coalition's policy we'll be taking to the next election. I think history will show that the Prime Minister is absolutely stuck in the dark ages when it comes to his approach to net zero nuclear power generation. Uh, we've got the Paris Olympics on. Our athletes are in a city that's powered by net zero nuclear. And if we're serious about climate change, we have to be serious about this technology that developed countries like ours have adopted across the world. So, unfortunately, I think this the poll shows that the PM has lost control of the energy debate and Australians want to do three things. They want to reach their climate goals. They want to make sure we keep jobs here on shore and they want to uh, make sure that we have reliable energy generation, not just to 2050, but beyond. And that's what adding nuclear to the mix will do. They want it cheaper too, and nuclear doesn't quite do that. Well, Laura, our international um, experience would suggest otherwise. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't know how much a renewables only uh, rollout will actually cost over time. We know that before we even get to 2050, we're going to have to be replacing uh, wind towers and solar panels, in some cases twice before we get there. Mm -hmm. And we don't know how that cleanup is going to be paid for either. So there's a lot of missing costings in the government's plan. We think renewables are a key plank of getting to net zero by 2050, but they just cannot deliver the reliability. Yeah. And we're seeing that play out right now in the fragility of our electricity grid uh, as we speak. So uh, we're serious about having a credible path, and I think Australians know that. Um, and I was on a, a Zoom meeting last night with uh, some nuclear physicists, female only, um, Zoom meeting, and it was just fantastic to hear their um, proposal and yeah. being just so passionate about how nuclear can actually help, not just with our economic future, but socially as well, with air quality, etc. All right, let's talk about Rex, because it does look like it is on the verge of collapse. Is that what we're looking at right now? Well, we don't know, Laura. Um, there's obviously concerns. They've called in Deloitte's, um, so they will be making yeah. announcements over the next 24... Oh, sorry, EY, mm. um, over the next 24 hours. Um, we just cannot allow Rex to fail. And I think we've seen, as the TWU's been yeah. saying, the playing out of the government's inaction on aviation regulation here. Rex has been okay. saying for a very, very long time uh, what an anti-competitive aviation sector we have and how hard it is to compete against particularly Qantas uh, and we're seeing that played out. They can't get those slots into Sydney and the government put out a press release six months ago 
and has done nothing to actually fix the problem. Mm. So, you know, I mean, for I'm, Anthony I'm Albanese's sure, Bridget, government... your instinct, to, um, given the side of politics you're on, is to, to leave this to the market, but that has never been the the case in the aviation sector uh, in Australia. There does need to be intervention. Mm. So when you're talking about intervention here, are you talking about taxpayer mm. funds to prop up wrecks? Is that what you see? want to see this government do? Well, Laura, last year I chaired an inquiry into the aviation sector while the government chose to run a protection racket for Alan Joyce, uh, CEO, and Qantas more generally. And they did that by ignoring the key recommendations out of that Senate inquiry. So we handed the government mm. on a platter a raft of recommendations to assist airlines like Rex, like Bonza, like Virgin and New Entrance uh, to actually get up and going and make our domestic aviation sector more competitive, to keep prices down. Uh, the government didn't take those recommendations up, right? They issued a press release six mm. months ago on the slots into Sydney but have taken no action on it. So, meanwhile, Rex, but, but would, as would that a small affected, airline... Would it, that have affected... Rex materially, or is I mean yes. losing a million dollars yes. a day Laura. a week apparently. Yeah, Laura, I can tell you absolutely those recommendations okay. would have because Rex has been telling the government for two years <laughs> that they need to fix the slot access into Sydney because you cannot run a successful sustainable aviation um, in you know company in this country mm. without access to our larger airport at yep. times that customers want and the government did nothing. Now when you look at the cancellation and delay data, Rex tops the pops, uh, yep. much better than Qantas. In some cases their ticket prices are half the price mm. but if you can't get into Sydney at a time that customers need, then you're trying to fight this with one hand tied behind your back. Mm. So the government should have acted six months ago. They're sitting on their hands saying now Oh, uh, you know, we hope it all works out. Well, get off your backsides and actually do something. Okay, so what should they do the now? I get that they should have done something them. six months ago on mm. the slot issue, but if, if Rex is on its knees as it is now, this is going to have a, a massive impact on regional towns. So do they need a bailout? Should well, the that government be at least needs an to have a plan to make sure should that... Should that at least be an option? Well, Laura... the. Laura, the government needs to make sure they have a plan. I'm not confident, given what we read in The Guardian today, uh, that the government does have a plan for Rex. Uh, they knew 10 days before Bonza collapsed and did nothing. They sat on their hands. And you know why? Because it suits Qantas for that to happen. Mm -hmm. And every single time that there's an opportunity to stand up against uh, Qantas in the aviation sector, this government picks the bully boy, rather than mm. the new competitors and the Australian travelling public. Uh, and that's, they've got to turn that around. They've got to have, have a plan to, be a little to bit actually careful get... here, don't we? Because Qantas does service a lot of these regional towns as well, and that competitive oh. um, nature with Rex is, is important. <laughs> Laura, I can tell you that uh, Rex, as the sole operator in, on um, routes such as Melbourne straight mm. into Marimbula or... Adelaide to Broken Hill that Qantas and Virgin didn't want to service. Yeah. They've been doing that as sole operator for a long time. As soon as Rex said they were going to compete uh, with Qantas on the very, very lucrative Melbourne-Sydney route, yeah. all of a sudden Qantas is flying those routes and losing money on them just to put Rex under financial pressure. This is the behaviour of this airline and this yeah, is what right. happens when you've got a very um, monopolised you know, power base, which Qantas does in our aviation sector, and the government's done nothing to do it, you know, with they were given the recommendations and didn't act. So I don't want to see Catherine King and Anthony Albanese wringing their hands saying, gee, I hope it all works out. They're responsible for this. They've got the levers at hand and we need action, not you know, uh, platitudes. All right, we'll hear from him uh, in the not-too-distant future. He'll be holding a media conference in Sydney, so yep. there'll be a few questions there. Bridget, thanks so much for your time, as always. Thanks, Laura.